Hello everyone, we made it to the weekend. I'm Courtney Courtright. Thank you so much for joining me for nine on the positive side. Let's tell you some of what's in store for our show today. As we look back on National Positivity Day, we'll show you one effort by a local group to make people feel more special. And it's a must see reunion that might even bring you to tears. The moment this sailor, sailor reunites with his family after nine months plus we're taking a trip to the North Carolina Zoo to show you what the plans are for a new addition there and what animals you can see once that new addition opens. Now we start out in Charlotte. The city is preparing to host an event for racing fans of all ages and preparation for this event. They got a group of elementary school students to help tap into their art skills. Brett Baldack has more. Preparation is already underway for the October 9th. Bank of America Roval 400 here at Charlotte Motor Speedway. Track officials are out installing curbs and painting the murals, but they also had some help from elementary school kids. More than 30 from across the Charlotte area came in to paint the turtles, which are basically the curbs that the race car use on the Roval, and they're called turtles because back in 2018, Dale Earnhardt Jr. used that term and it stuck. Now, the paintings on the turtles are books, the favorite books of many of the elementary school aged kids, and they were visited by two NASCAR drivers, Ty Dillon and Eric Jones, and we asked them what it's going to be like on October 9th when they unfortunately have to drive their car over the pieces of art. I don't know, I guess you feel kind of bad when you're tearing up all their artwork. They're working pretty hard out here on them today, but it's really cool. I mean, just getting the kids out here to the track and a lot of them haven't haven't been here before, haven't seen the track. So they've all explained to me why they chose the book and why they're painting what they're doing. And it's so cool. So going around, I'll see the different paintings on track when I'm out there and, and kind of remember the, the faces and the kids and the excitement. An interesting note is that one of the elementary schools here was Royal Oaks Academy of the Arts, which is the same school that Dale Earnhardt went to back when it was called Royal Oaks Elementary. For now, reporting from Charlotte Motor Speedway, Brett Baldeck, Queen City News. What a great effort out there. Now out in Illinois, one farm is said to have the world's largest corn maze. They're celebrating their 60th anniversary of James Bond. Yeah, check it out. It features more than 10 miles of trails and sits on 28 acres in Spring Grove, Illinois. One of the owners says the maze is made using high tech corn planter tractors outfitted with GPS and special shutoffs. As the tractor travels across the field, corn seed is dropped to plant the maze's pattern down to the tiny details you're seeing right there of their chosen design. It's really strange drawing in a cornfield, as you might imagine, with, with basically a six foot wide brush. So uh, it's an interesting process. Richardson says even though the process was a pretty big one, as you might imagine, it's very enjoyable to be able to see the results come full circle. And we're all looking for some more positive stories, right? Do you know someone or something that's going on that is just all about good news? Well, we want to hear from you. Send your ideas to the email right there on your screen, newsdesk at WNCT.com. You can also reach out to me on Facebook or Twitter. Decreasing the stigma associated with mental illness. That's the goal of Pitt Partners for Health Positivity campaign. Not on your side, Sarah Gray Barr talking with organizers about their movement for peace and happiness. Advocating for mental health is a top priority for Pitt Partners for Health. And they Hi everyone and happy weekend. I'm Courtney Courtright. Thank you so much for joining me for nine on the positive side. Let's tell you some of what's in store for our show today. As we look back on National Positivity Day, we'll show you one effort by a local group to make people feel special. And it's a must-see reunion that might even bring you to tears. It made me the moment this sailor reunites with his family after nine months away. Plus, we're taking a trip to the North Carolina Zoo to show what the plans are for a new addition and what animals you can see once it opens. But we start in Charlotte first. 
The city is preparing to host an event for racing fans of all ages. In preparation for this event, they got a group of elementary school students to help tap into their art skills. Brett Baldick has more. Preparation is already underway for the October 9th Bank of America Roval 400 here at Charlotte Motor Speedway. Track officials are out installing curbs and painting the murals, but they also had some help from elementary school kids. More than 30 from across the Charlotte area came in to paint the turtles, which are basically the curbs that the race car use on the Roval, and they're called turtles because back in 2018, Dale Earnhardt Jr. used that term and it stuck. Now, the paintings on the turtles are books, the favorite books of many of the elementary school aged kids, and they were visited by two NASCAR drivers, Ty Dillon and Eric Jones, and we asked them what it's going to be like on October 9th when they unfortunately have to drive their car over the pieces of art. I don't know, I guess you feel kind of bad when you're tearing up all their artwork. They're working pretty hard out here on them today, but it's really cool. I mean, just getting the kids out here to the track and a lot of them haven't haven't been here before, haven't seen the track. So they've all explained to me why they chose the book and why they're painting what they're doing. And it's so cool. So going around, I'll see the different paintings on track when I'm out there and, and kind of remember the, the faces and the kids and the excitement. An interesting note is that one of the elementary schools here was Royal Oaks Academy of the Arts, which is the same school that Dale Earnhardt went to back when it was called Royal Oaks Elementary. For now, reporting from Charlotte Motor Speedway, Brett Baldeck, Queen City News. A nice effort there. Now out in Illinois, one farm is said to have the world's largest corn maze. They're celebrating their 60th anniversary of James Bond. Yeah, check this out. It's pretty cool. It features more than 10 miles of trails and sits on 28 acres in Spring Grove, Illinois. One of the owners says the maze is made using high tech corn planter tractors outfitted with a GPS system and special shutoffs. As the tractor travels across the field, corn seed is dropped to plant the maze's pattern, which you're seeing right now, to the tiny details of their chosen design. It's really strange drawing in a cornfield, as you might imagine, with, with basically a six foot wide brush. So uh, it's an interesting process. That's a pretty cool one too. Richardson says, even though the process was, as you can imagine, a pretty big one, it's very enjoyable to be able to see the results come alive. And we're all looking for some more positive stories, right? Do you know someone or something that's going on that's just all about good news? Well, we want to hear from you. Send your e ideas to the email on your screen, newsdesk at wnct.com. You can also reach out to me on Facebook or on Twitter. Now switching gears, decreasing the stigma associated with mental illness. That is the goal of Pitt Partners for Health Positivity campaign. Now to your side, Sarah Gray Barr talked with organizers about their movement for peace and for happiness. Advocating for mental health is a top priority for Pitt Partners for Health. And they said spreading these positive messages is just one way to raise awareness. We work with um, some of our action team leaders um, to figure out what those messages would be and then work with the communities to try to figure out how we can spread the word to everyone in the county. Messages like, you are amazing, remember that, and everything that you are is enough are just a couple of the suggested phrases for the positivity campaign. And we are trying to promote positivity throughout um, Pitt County and broader if we have to. We have mental illnesses all throughout this nation due to a lot of reasons, finances, COVID, diseases, and we just want to make sure people feel valued. Pitt Partners for Health asked businesses, agencies, and faith organizations to display these signs all to let community members know that they are cared for and to connect people to local mental health resources. We want people to feel positive every day. That is so important in a world where people are feeling sad, depressed, and whatever. We want them to know that they are not alone. There are resources here in Pitt County that can help them. Freeman hopes this campaign will encourage people to quite literally look for positive signs. They are not alone, that we're here to help, as well as other people. So that would be the message that I would say to Pitt County, you are not alone. 
A beautiful message, and that was Sarah Graybar reporting for us. Fighting to alleviate the symptoms of Parkinson's, a new facility in Craven County is one of many opening across the country, helping patients do just that. Not in your sides, Claire Curry speaking with experts and people who suffer through Parkinson's on how the sweet science of boxing is helping them. Boxing can improve speed and strength, but also help with mobility and coordination for people who have been affected by Parkinson's disease. We are, we are. Bethany Richards began Rocksteady Boxing in an existing facility when her father was diagnosed with Parkinson's in 2009. He's such a warrior. He's, he's my dad. He's been the strongest man I've known my whole life. With Parkinson's disease, the basal ganglia in the brain is affected, causing delayed movements and sometimes tremors. And exercise is the medicine. It really um, emphasizes these large amplitude explosive movements that really combats those smaller amplitude movements that are found in Parkinson's. Bethany's father has seen his own improvements firsthand. That's helped me with my gait, with walking. Um, mobility especially, that's my, my biggest problem. And it's also good mental, mental health. Rocksteady started with just six boxers. But with over one million people affected with Parkinson's disease across the country and many in eastern North Carolina, it has grown to over 50 boxers. We're in um, almost our third year of doing Rocksteady boxing here in New Bern. With the growth, their own facility was needed. We actually found seven new members from those grand openings, people that have Parkinson's that now um, can join our beneficial exercise class. And today, Bethany and her father were able to celebrate his 75th birthday with a workout. It's just hard to describe what, what it means when it's your own daughter who's making these things happen. For more information on Rocksteady Boxing, we'll have that listed on our website at WNCT.com. In New Bern, Claire Curry, 9 on your side. Did we surprise you? Yeah, was it a good surprise? Are you happy? Yeah? A surprise at school. Next on 9 on the positive side, the heartwarming moment. These kids noticed their dad at their school after nine months of deployment. Right, you might want to grab the tissues for this story. Soldiers returned home to Naval Station Norfolk after a nine month deployment. Chief Michael Collins has five kids and he decided it would be memorable to surprise them at their school in Virginia Beach. Angela Bahorn has this story. Staff here at St. Matthews was excited to be part of the big day. Mom and dad were a bit anxious, but they agreed to let us walk through the halls with them and capture their special moment. So they don't expect that until um, another two days. Oh, I am so excited about this. This is just, it's good news. We all need some good news. Nine months is a long time to be gone. More than a quarter of students at St. Matthew's Catholic School in Virginia Beach are part of military families. It's an exciting time, but definitely a difficult time, and hopefully we'll be here for them for all of that. And here is the moment, nine months in the making. <laughs> nice to and it wasn't just one amazing surprise with fifth grader Brody. I just thought it'd be cool to come get you from school. Did we surprise you? Yeah, was it a good surprise? Are you happy? Yeah. Navy Chief Michael Collins also surprised his daughter Emery while in PE class. At first, she doesn't notice dad. Actually sprints away from him and doesn't about face when her classmates start yelling her name. Okay. You're so beautiful. You got so big. <laughs> Thank you. As if that wasn't enough to get the tears flowing, a sweet reunion with his youngest. <laughs> we miss you so much. Morgan, who's in kindergarten, doesn't know Chief Michael Collins as a hospital corpsman, just daddy. That's pretty. And she wasted no time showing him her new lunchbox. <laughs> They're a lot bigger, especially the, the little one, Morgan. She got huge. Chief Collins said he's looking forward to hanging out with the family and having some regular food. 
Morgan suggested Chick-fil-A. Daddy's home. <laughs> Daddy's home. Daddy's home. So happy for that family coming together to make a little girl's dream come true. Next, a look into the busy morning this girl had on her first day as an honorary police officer. Welcome back. A police department in Ohio is going above and beyond to make a five year old girl's dream come true. She was given the chance to be an honorary police officer for the day. Roosevelt Leftwood shows us her busy day. To be a successful police officer, you need a few things. First, a badge and a uniform. And of course, a cool car. You also need hugs, a lot of them. And Officer Allison gives out a lot. You see, at five years old, Allison Need, badge number 300, is the newest officer to join the Mansfield Police Force. Do you hug a lot of people? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Why do you like to hug people? Because I love them. She is truly full of love and full of life, a life that when she was born, many doctors didn't think she would have. You see, Allison was born with a genetic disorder called Neiman Pick C, a very rare disorder that doesn't allow the body's cells to absorb fats, which slowly deteriorates the brain and is usually fatal. She was only given six months to live at birth, but she just turned five. She wasn't doing so good as a baby, but with love and um, with love and support and by the grace of God, she's still here with us. And when law enforcement here found out her wish to be one of them, Mansfield Police, Richland County Sheriffs, and Shelby Police all worked together to help Officer Allison reach that goal. And they all put her right to work. Jar in this room, or in this detective bureau out there that the detectives use. It's our candy jar. Officer Allison made the rounds of police headquarters, first talking to witnesses. And I saw Sergeant Paul. That's all I know. Then she helped look for fingerprints at the forensics lab. After all, the bad guys always leave behind a few clues. It's like you're painting. You know how you paint a picture? Go ahead and do it like you're painting. There you go. Nice and light. Nice and light. Oh, look at that. There's something right there. And after fingerprints and witness testimony, the search ended. And Allison found out what everyone who ever watched any episode of Kojak always knows. It's always the guy you least suspect. Are you going to arrest the chief? Are you going to put him in cuffs? He's there, he stole the candy. You can't give me I a can't, break? I'm going to give him one more chance. Nice. Oh, oh, well, Perfect. bless your heart, officer. With that case solved, Officer Allison had a very busy morning, but she plans on hanging up her badge soon. After all, she starts kindergarten this week, and a life full of fun and love is still ahead. In Mansfield, Roosevelt Leftwich, Fox 8 News. Allison has a busy life for a five-year-old. Now, some Greensboro Police Department officers got a noise complaint over the weekend, and they went to go and check it out. The call instead turned into something that one young girl will always remember. Check it out. Officers found there was a quinceanera going on. The birthday girl's family extending the invite to officers when they got there. You can see them eating some food, taking a picture with the birthday girl. They even handed out stickers to the people there, too. Now, if you do want more positive news, we have just the spot for you, and you're looking right at it, and it's easy. Just go to our website, WNCG.com. It's all under the 9 on the positive side tab. You can also rewatch all of our nine on the positive side episodes there too, if you would like to. Ahead on nine on the positive side, parts of the North Carolina Zoo are under construction. More from officials who say they're working on something really, really fun for all visitors. Carolina Zoo in decades. Yeah, the Asia habitat will sit in the center of the zoo between the current North America and Africa habitats. Shannon Smith has more on how the zoo is keeping all animals safe during construction. Yes, she loves to see everything. Alley Cat climbs high in her habitat to take a look around. I imagine, yeah, she's paying attention to that. <laughs> Construction just started on the new Asia expansion, which will be home to tigers, Komodo dragons, and gibbons. Crew 
crews are clearing the land and will begin blasting away at rock underneath. It's not only noisy, but it's also literally shaking things up at the zoo. The vibrations are going to be across the entire zoo, so we're probably going to keep an eye on pretty much everyone for that. Um, but we have chosen to focus on the animals that are closest in proximity. The close animals include Allie and all the snakes and fish in the streamside habitats, the polar bears, seals, seabirds, and arctic foxes in Rocky Coast, as well as the bison and elk on the North American prairie. Zookeepers will watch closely for any signs of stress. So that's like, what's their body condition? What is their skin or their coat or their feather condition? Are there any signs of stress? Sound monitors are also set up around these habitats to record the amount of noise over the course of the day. Zookeepers will use all of that data to make adjustments to the habitats to block the noise or allow animals to stay inside during the day. And then if we really needed to, we would look at moving the animals to other locations that are further from construction. As for Allie, the new construction quickly caught her attention, but now she and the other animals have seemed to settle. So far, everybody seems pretty good. That includes keepers and guests too, but that could change with four years of construction construction ahead. <laughs> I think right now we're only two weeks in. I think we're all still gung ho, but give us some more time and, and we might be worn down a little bit. And that was Shannon Smith reporting for us. Now zoo officials say they're consulting with other facilities like Disney's Animal Kingdom that have gone through similar construction projects throughout the process. And speaking of construction out in Charlotte, a new aviation museum is set to come right here to North Carolina. State leaders say the $30 million, 105,000 square foot facility will be located next to the Charlotte Douglas International Airport. It will include exhibits and education programs for people of all ages. So just a couple of things to look forward to. And we have one more thing to show you before we take off. Meet Captain, the newest member of a fire department in Virginia. Have a great day, everyone. Thank you so much for watching Nine on the Positive Side. We'll see you next week.